In this video, I'm going to show you what's in the new Space Marine Codex and Necron Codex. And what's in these books, anyway? This is a special edition episode, but uh, still the same hair, so same fez. So it's here, folks. It's new Codex season for the new edition, 9th edition, Warhammer 40,000. So we've got the Necrons, and it's a lovely cover with a big old uh, Senior Score Pack right there on the cover, and it says the Necrons right there, and the one that you're probably more interested in, potentially, at least numerically it seems to be the case, uh, the Space Marine Codex as well. First thing I'm going to show you right here, right off the bat, is the thickness. Um, this one right here is about as half as thick as this one right here, and as it turns out, the thin one's the Necrons, and the thick one is our friends, the Space Marines. And I think that's kind of to be expected, I suppose. But uh, I just wanted to kind of go through real quick and show you some of the stuff that's in the book. Um, kind of like the sections and like what you can expect when or if you decide to pull the trigger on either one of these books and pick one or both of them up in the coming weeks, I guess. I think it's a couple of weeks from now when they'll start showing up in stores. All right, so here we've got our Warhammer 40,000 Space Marines Codex. It's got a big old blue poster boy right there on the front shooting some, I don't know, unidentified bad people. I don't see anybody on the, I don't know who they're shooting at. Anyway, uh, opponents, let's say that. And um, the book is, it's got kind of a little bit of a Game of Thrones, like little, little scary faces in the alcoves sort of thing going on in, the, in there, which I think is fun. Um, the first huge section of this book, up to about page 90, is all what, for lack of a better term, may be referred to as fluff. I mean, you have a lot of... Uh, oh, it looks if you extend that image out over here that's on the cover, it looks like they're shooting at chaos, which I get, I'm, I understand. But it's talking about, again, the creation of a space marine and the thousand chapters, and here's a big honking map, and uh, chapter planets. And it basically is giving you all the stuff that, if you've been in this for a while, you probably know. Like, if you've been a space marine fan for some time, you've probably read some of these, you know, preambles in the beginning of these rules, rule books in the past. So it's the same stuff. And some of it is even, like this piece of artwork I've seen for years, uh, it's cool, but it's been around for a while. So it's not particularly new, but there's also plenty of also new pieces of artwork as well. They talk about, um, you know, the difference, like what a chapter breakdown is as far as the reserve companies and the chapter command and the veterans and the battle companies and all that jazz. And then it goes through and starts explaining first company, battle companies, um, gives you some war zones, um, reserve companies. I mean, it just goes through and explains pretty much all the nuts and bolts of what makes the Space Marines, the Space Marines. Um, librarians, the Armory, you know, starts showing some cool diagrams of different vehicles. You got your new Storm Speeder there. You got your Repulsor, but you still got yourself a good old, old-fashioned Land Raider. Um, and just, it goes through with all the fun stuff, shows you the different heraldry and the things that make up the different chapters. And there's a lot of chapters in here. I mean, obviously they're going to lead off and tell you about the Ultramarines. But then just look at all the different successor chapters that you get to learn about on this big spread. It's pretty cool, actually, I think. Um, and then they go through into the Imperial Fists and the Blood Angels and the White Scars and the Dark Angels and the Raven Guard. And then we get into some more stuff. Oh, and then there's the Space Wolves and the Salamanders and the Iron Hands and the Death Watch and then successor chapters. Now, the interesting thing about successor chapters, not so much here in the story part of the book, but in the future part, is that they've given you a couple new tools to build your own chapter. People have been designing their own chapters for years, coming up with their own cool color scheme and all that stuff, and even backstory. But when it comes time to come up with the rules, then you're like, well, it's basically salamanders, you know, or it's basically, you know, Raven Guard or whatever, but you've done your own thing. You can do a little bit more than that coming up in this book. But there's pages and pages and pages of different, uh, you know, the Tiger's Argent. Never heard of them before. Um... The Minotaurs, I have heard of them before. The Brazen Skulls, not sure if I've heard of them before. And again, more story and more story, talking about different ways that you can, different insignia that you can put onto your Space Marines. And we're getting into a lot more painted stuff as opposed to artwork. We would call this maybe the hobby section, except they're not telling you this is how you paint and this is how you shade. That stuff, stuff you find generally on the website these days or, you know, through the, you know, YouTube. Um, or Twitch, you know, there's that too. Anyway, um, 
nice big huge spread, all that kind of stuff. And then we start actually at page 90 getting into the rules, the actual, um, what some people will say that's the whole point of the book. But I still think that all that cool story stuff, especially if you're really invested in whatever army this is, and in this situation it's Space Marines, and in the next book it'll be the Necrons, I think that stuff is also still, for a lot of people, a really big deal. Even the people who are just only into the lore and don't play, they'll dig that stuff too. But the people who are players but also really want to know about the lore, it's nice to have that all in one spot, in my opinion. So it gives you kind of a sub... Um, table of contents to explain what you're going to be finding here in the rules section. You've got your Battle Forge rules, your Army rules, your Match Play rules, your Crusade rules. And it's interesting that Match Play and Crusade have their own sections. But I think that, that you're going to see why that is. And then we get into the data sheets and the war gear. The points, the new points right here in this book. You don't have to buy a separate book to find out what the points are. And then there's a glossary and reference and all that jazz. So... And then it goes right into Combat Patrol, which I think is interesting. Before it starts talking about anything, they focus on Combat Patrol. For those of you that don't know, Combat Patrol is the smallest size battles that technically you can play in Warhammer uh, 40k. So if, you're, if you understand how point ratings work, it's like a 25 point, um, 25 point, or sorry, power ratings. I always get them mixed. If you understand power ratings, it's a 25 power rating uh, force. If you understand points, it's about 500 points. So it's a very small little detachment, but they have definitely gone in on making it understanding that there's an easier way to get into full-blown 40k. To get into the hobby, you got things like Kill Team, you got things like um, War Cry, you got, you know, uh, Warhammer Underworlds, things like that. Uh, but now if you want to get actually into 40k, they even have a slightly simpler, slightly less impact as far as your wallet and the amount of time it takes to build and paint way to get into 40k. And it's featured right here in the beginning kind of section of the rules, which I think is a smart deal. Um, you also get into different detachment abilities and then we get into the chapter tactics for all the chapters that we kind of went over before, like the Black Templars and things like that. There will be supplements for many of these books that are not full-blown codices. There will be supplemental codices that will be, you'll, you'll need this book but you'll also need potentially the Red Angel, the, the, so the Red Angels, the Red Thirst, the Blood Angels book is uh, the supplement as well. If you want to play them to their fullest, I guess I'm not 100 percent sure what these new supplements are going to look like. No one's really seen them yet. But um, this is the page, this, the successor chapter tactics. This, if your chosen chapter does not have an associated chapter tactic on pages 94 through 95, because you probably made up a chapter, which is fine, or maybe it's a, one of those really weird ones that's no one ever's heard of, but it's still in the book in that one section. Uh, you must instead create their chapter tactics by selecting rules from the list here. Unless otherwise stated, your chapter ta chapter has two successor tactics from the following list. So you get to pick two of these. Bolter full of sides, or full of sides, uh, born heroes, duelists, fearsome aspect, blah, 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 indomitable, rabbit. There's like two, well, one and a half pages of these different successor uh, chapter tactics that you can use then to make your chapter into your own thing, which I think is really cool. And then you start getting into chapter command, where you can basically update characters into specific masters of the chapter. So you can take a chaplain and turn him into a master of sanctity. You can take an ancient and turn them into a chapter ancient, that kind of stuff. And it explains the different benefits uh, and the different abilities and rules that they're going to get, which is also, I think, new to ninth edition. Um, and then we get into the stratagems, which are basically, you know, if you've been playing since eighth, you understand what the stratagems are to some degree and you use your um, uh, command points, all that jazz. And then warlord traits, we get into relics, which is relics have been around for a long time. Get into some of the disciplines, librarian disciplines, obscuration discipline, uh, which is a psyker thing as well. And then we get into the litanies of battle, which is stuff that you're going to have for your, um, you know, like your chaplain and that kind of jazz. And then there's some other rules here, chapter approved stuff. Here's an entire section on crusade rules, which I think is interesting because what they're doing is I think they're going all in on crusade stuff. They want to obviously foster the people to keep playing, you know, the, the competitive stuff at tournaments and big, big events and things like that. But they definitely also want to get the folks who aren't interested in that and want more than just, it's basically me playing like I'm at a tournament, except I'm just playing against my friend Bill. And, but we're not that competitive and it's fine. And we play in Bill's basement or whatever. If you and Bill want to really kind of throw down and have like a story that you build as you go through and do all this stuff, you can play a campaign using the crusade rules 
And then we've got a bunch of stuff in here, which is just specific to Space Marines for the Crusade rules. And then the you know, requisitions, battle traits, all this stuff, uh, honorifics, is stuff that you would get, the relics for Crusades. All of it is the same stuff that you would get in Crusades if you look at the ninth edition. And they show you some stuff, and now we get into the data sheets. And this goes on for pages and pages and pages and pages. There's one, two, three, four pages of just captains. Because there's so many captains in the Space Marine. Oh, wait, five. Five pages of captains. And then, oh, lieutenants, primaris lieutenants. They go on for pages. And then librarians. And then some bunch of chaplains. Whole two pages of chaplains. That's a lot of chaplains. Uh, tech marines. We're going to get into a lot of different things. Intercessors, squads. Um, you'll notice the intercessors are uh, two wounds. Hmm. Um, however, heavy intercessor squads, three wounds. So you got that going for you, I guess. Tactical squads, also two wounds. Huh, weird. And um, it just kind of keeps going like this. The old school stick scout squad, you can kind of see there. Like, that model hasn't changed in a long time, and I don't know if it ever will. But they still got them right there in the book, in a, in a place of, um, you know, of infamy. Uh, Primaris ancient blade guard agents, ancients who are in Terminator armor, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it just goes through and gives you the stats and the information and the power rating for each of these deals. Uh, Reavers, aggressors, Terminators, we're just still going. This is just a lot of different types of units in the Space Marines. We're getting into Dreadnoughts, Assault Squads, the Bike Squad, Scout Bike Squads, Attack Bike Squads, uh, Inceptors, Storm Speeders... A whole bunch of those. Land speeder tornadoes. I haven't seen one of them in a long time. Eliminators, eradicators, devastators. Uh, so many different things. Four pages of all vehicles that are based off of the same chassis. The Hunter, the Stalker, the Whirlwind, and the Predator. Uh, a lot more Predators. Here we get into the Gladiator Lancer. It just kind of keeps going like this. And um, it will eventually stop. It stops, not with the Storm Raven, but with the Hammerfall Bunker, the new kind of a little drop from the sky sort of um, missile tent bunker pillbox thing. Anyway, that's all the stuff. I mean, there's a lot of units, obviously, in Space Marines. It's the, the army that sells the best, and so they keep making more and more stuff for it. Some people ask if it sells the best because they keep making more and more stuff for it, and I don't believe that. I believe it's because it sells so well, they keep making more stuff for it to make it to, so that they can even, you know, sell more. I think if frankly, the Eldar or the Orcs were the biggest seller, they would have the biggest, thickest book and have the most units. That's just the way the business works. Uh, you get into weapon profiles here, so you've got all the stats for all the weapons, and then you get into points. Here's all the points values. You can see these early right there, and they're right there in the book, and it goes for pages and pages and pages of points values, and then we get into a glossary. There's It doesn't, it doesn't not remind me of, say, the 8th edition book, but all the Crusade stuff... And a lot of the other kind of sort of middle stuff that talks about the successor chapters and all that kind of jazz, in my mind, because I've got the previous book to this for 8th edition, and this one is definitely chonkier by a good deal. Um, so, you know, if you are looking to get into Space Marines, now is a happy day because you are going to be able to buy this book and have everything you need unless you like to play one, you know, like the... Space, the uh, Space Wolves or um, Blood Angels or whatever. You can still play them for now because you've got chapter tactics in there, but, you know, it's there'll be a supplemental codex that'll come out as well. Uh, we've got the same kind of inside here for the Necrons. So that same sort of kind of Game of Thrones little faces in the little uh, things. And it's basically the same thing, just a lot less of it. We're going to go through, obviously, we have a huge introduction with all of the, you know, In Search of Immortality. It's the story of the Necrons. So if you don't really understand where the Necrons came from, or you picked up Indominus and you really dig it, but you don't really know a lot about, uh, about the Necrons, but you really liked building them and you're really looking forward to playing them, well, then you're going to need this book. And again, we've got a hierarchy of the Necrons that shows kind of like in that other page on the Space Marine book, like this is how the chapter master sits and this is where this guy is. And on this guy's, you know, Christmas list, uh, then this guy's below that or whatever the deal is. You have, again, all this information in here. And this one is not going to go to 90 pages before we get to rules, but it will get through a lot. In this one, we also start getting into, just like we did in the other one, we start having little stories, little kind of fluff bits about each different, um, you know, the special people, the characters, if you will. 
And we go through that, and then we start getting into the different dynasties and what they look like. Um, you can see the new flayed ones here again, which I'm really looking forward to when they come out. Again, some big honking full page, full spread art stuff. And now we get into the rules here on page 48. So there's a lot less fluff even than the Space Marines, but there's a lot more Space Marines to write fluff about. So I guess it makes sense. And again, Battleforge rules, army rules, match play. We get Crusade, data sheets. It's the same stuff. So those are the things that you're going to get. And again, we're leading off with a thing about combat patrol. So I think we're going to see in nearly every one of these books mention of combat patrol because they definitely want to get folks involved in it. And I will tell you straight up front right now, about probably the only way I'm going to end up playing 40K these days because I've got so many other games to play like Necromunda and Warcry and Kill Team and Zona Alpha and uh, Planet 28 and Star Breach and other stuff that's going to come up, I'm sure, in the next couple of months. Uh, I can see myself playing some 40K, but only Crusade Combat Patrol. So very small and using the, um, the Crusade kind of campaign almost RPG rules, which I made a book about, or a book, I made a video about the first mission pack book uh, called uh, Beyond the Veil, and you can check it, uh, it, it was actually yesterday to me. So anyway, um, anyway, detachment abilities, the different dynasties, it's the same type of stuff, obviously. It's just with different names. A lot of what happens in 40K is like, this is like this, it's just we called it different things. Um, and again, we've got lots and lots of stratagems. Um, and then we're getting into Cryptek Arcana. Uh, so you get to pick different uh, Arcana for your, your people. You get Warlord Traits, that kind of jazz, Relics. It's a lot of the same stuff. Chapter Approved Rules, Powers of the Catan, Crusade Rules again we get into, Requisitions, Dynastic Epithets. Uh, for the Warlord of your Crusade Army, so that's getting into more Crusade stuff. Uh, you've got Arcane... Uh, collector, Lord of Legions, Arch Machinator. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff in here. I, when I first flipped through these when I got them a couple days ago, I, uh, I, was, I was a little lost, I'll be honest. As a person who's been looking at these codexes, codices, whatever, since mm, fourth. I started playing in fifth, but I was looking at these books since I think fourth. A lot of them I was looking, a lot of this I'm looking at now, and it's just so dense. There's so much stuff in there. Um, so, if you have that first feel when you are even just watching me flip through all these pages, weapon enhancement, battle scars, this stuff is all the data, but in many situations you don't need all the data. If you're playing just straight competitive with your friends or at tournaments, you don't need any of this crusade stuff. If you're only playing the crusade stuff, you don't need the points at the end and all that kind of jazz. Um, but they are pushing very heavily into the crusade stuff for this new ninth edition, and I understand why they're doing it. Now we get into the data sheets. And again, far less data sheets than there are from our friends, the Space Marines. But all this stuff, Chronomancer, Psychomancer, Plasmancer, Technomancer. Turns out there's a lot of Mancers now uh, here in the, uh, the you know, the, the, the Necron army. But um, Lich Guard, Flayed Ones. Flayed Ones, one wound. Hmm. Um, yeah, so all the information, again, laid out basically the same. Um, these two books are a lot alike. It's just that one is twice as thick as the other. And the stories are very different because they're talking about very different groups of folks. So if you are, and I've been having a lot of people asking me uh, in comments on the YouTube channel, people have been asking me on Twitch when I've been painting and stuff like that, asking me, should I wait for this new book? You know, yes, I would definitely say that waiting until this new book comes out, which, you know, as of the launch of this will be about a week or so, uh, it's a good idea to wait because if you are interested in playing either Space Marines or Necrons, this stuff will be what you want to play. Uh, these are the books you're going to want to you're going to want to have is is the straight up, and they will have generally for most players more information than you will potentially ever use. If you are a person who loves to play competitively but also loves to play the crusade narrative stuff, then nearly everything in, in these books will be perfect for you. But if you like one or the other, both will be in there and you can kind of in your mind just decide, I'm not going to pay attention to this part of the book and it will make it a little bit easier for you because you can just sort of like pass over those pages and then go to the pages that you want and it makes it a little bit easier. So I hope that this helped to get... Uh, some ideas in your head about whether this new book is for you. I mean, obviously, if you're playing something that's not Space Marines and not Necrons, then it's probably not. You're going to want to wait till yours come out. But this is also going to hopefully help you 
look and see what pretty much all the rest of the books that are going to be coming out in ninth edition for the actual codexes, what they will look like and what they will be formatted like and, um, and how they will work for you. And you can make your decisions from there.